We can first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is our mega preview pod for this week's WGC Workday, and of course, a Tiger Woods update. And joining me to break it all down, Kyle Porter is here. KP, welcome. I'm, we're back. Yeah, back at it. Another day. Uh, <coughs> it'll be it'll be good to talk some golf today. You know, yesterday was so it was so weird and sad, and I don't know. There was just a lot of different emotions around that, but. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into the Tiger stuff a little more too. Yeah, we're going to get into, uh, we did get an update from Tiger, so we're going to get into that, but it will be nice to talk a little bit of golf. And also joining us, it's the coach. Hey, coach, good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, KP. And it, just full disclosure, you know, it, it's, you know, Tiger Woods is my favorite athlete of all time, and it's not mm -hmm. close. And so uh, when KP talks about the different emotions uh, yesterday, I certainly went through a whole gamut uh, for a lot of different reasons that we'll get into, but it's great to be on with you guys. Um, I'm glad we pushed this back to Wednesday uh, after what happened yesterday. And, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm anxious to talk about it. Yeah, so let's let's just get everybody up to date. So when when Kyle and I reported a podcast yesterday, what we had known was that Tiger was in a single car accident. Uh, he had suffered multiple leg injuries. His he was in surgery at the time. And coach, we didn't we didn't get a chance to talk to you. So I want to I want to kind of get your reaction to as this day played out because it's always it's always scary and weird and you don't know what's true and what's not true and you're just kind of waiting for official updates and and we did get one last night on the medical which we'll talk about in a second but uh, obviously uh, jarring news that kind of stops everything around us when it happens it was it was really really scary for me and I'll put I'll, I'll put it in context for you uh, a year ago uh, the day that Kobe Bryant tragically passed away I was in Houston and I started getting these texts, and all they would say was, Kobe, Kobe question mark. Oh, my God, Kobe. And yesterday, the exact same thing happened that mm. all my friends started texting me, Tiger, Tiger question mark, what happened? I literally panicked. I, I, I was like, you, you, this, can't, this can't be happening again. And then I started scrolling through Twitter, and there was nothing on Twitter yet. And I was like, oh, it's, it's probably just hearsay. And then, obviously, when, when things you know came down, uh, it, it just – for me, I went through the – is I hope he's okay. I went through the mad at people on Twitter who were making all kinds of accusations. I went through the – by the evening, he's probably never going – we're probably never going to see him competitively on the golf course again, which is the, the biggest reason why we all love him so much is all the great times and all the great Sundays and all the great moments that he's given us over the years. And we know he was out with the back injury. And then I went to that, that as you roll your car and – he has these serious leg injuries. How is the back now that just went through back surgery, what, six weeks ago? And yeah. I just hope he's okay, and I hope he's able to uh, be a dad. I hope he's able to walk again um, correctly. Um, but now, as of this morning, my thoughts about him on the golf course are gone. They're yeah. gone. And I just want him to be able to be a dad and live a normal life for, for however long you know he's got. Yeah, we, we've certainly detached ourselves from Tiger Woods, the golfer, and are looking at Tiger Woods, the human, the father. Uh, and, and we did get a medical update last night, KP. So since the last time we chatted, there was a statement released from Tiger's team kind of updating us on the procedure or procedures that were done. And, and just to kind of highlight this, I mean, we're talking about fractures affecting both the upper and lower portions of the tibia, tibia and fibula. Uh, a rod was inserted into his tibia. There were additional injuries to... To his foot, his ankle that was uh, repaired or stabilized with a combination of screws and pins. And then KP, there was trauma to muscle and soft tissue in the leg as well. And just as I continue to read this and, you know, uh, be asked to, to kind of digest this, sounds like a lot. I, I mean, sounds like a horrific uh, set of injuries that required what appeared to be many hours worth of surgery. Yeah, there's a lot of words in there that I don't know what they mean. So I talked to a couple people, and um, that it, it's it's very serious. And I think that, it, like, I don't mean serious as in like, oh, you might not play golf again. Like, serious as in like, we're not. It, it's not like, oh, they did surgery and we're just moving on. It's like, oh, they did surgery and like, there's gonna be a lot of treatment and follow up and like, it, it's it's not. I. <laughs> So one of my friends, uh, he just went skiing and his daughter broke her leg and he showed me the picture and it's like this sliver, like, like 
you know, cutting across the bone in her leg. And you're like, oh, that's what a broken leg looks like. That is not what happened here, right? Like, like if you talk to an orthopedic surgeon, if you sort of read between the lines of of um, the language that's used in there, it's like an explosion, you know? And so that's the part where you're like, okay, how, like, how's this going to go on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday? Like, it's not just a Tuesday thing. It's, it, it, it's going to play out for several days. Yeah. And I think, I think that's the part that, that is uh, just scary as a, you know, just as a person, as a human, kind of like we've been talking about. I think that, you know, when I read this and coach uh, the, the tiger camp, uh, historically close to the vest, historically lacking detail, mm. this was, this was more than I thought we were going to get like yeah. the level of deep, which to me says uh, the, the level of severity here. And then also I, I completely agree to Kyle's point. I mean, this is now day two of many, a, a very long road ahead uh, for Tiger to seemingly get upright, answer those questions before we even consider anything golf related. I think the reason that we we saw such a level of detail from Tiger's camp is because it was um, such a serious situation. There was so much speculation going on uh, yeah. across social media, and a lot of it was false. Uh, and so I think they said, you know what, we're going to control the narrative, which is something that his camp has never done. Right. They, they never notoriously uh, they're very silent. They'll let rumors run rampant. And that was not the case yesterday. So I think it, it obviously uh, shows how serious they're taking this. I think it also shows how much more open they are now and the way Tiger is now than he's ever been in the past. And I watched the video last night of uh, you guys may have uh, seen it that Dwayne Wade put out from the day before. And I don't know that I've ever seen Tiger smile as big as he was smiling, be as uncomfortable. You never would have saw, uh, I don't care the level of, of celebrity, I'll, allow somebody to shoot a video of him in it and then post it. He was just, he, it just seems like he's, he's in such a great place, right? And, and now this happens, and it's going to be very, very difficult for him to uh, emotionally deal with this and get through this. And you always want to control how your career ends. And for it to end this way, I think he's got to thank his lucky stars that he's alive today. Yeah, yeah. That, that is also uh, my big takeaway. You know, we we heard law enforcement early on Tuesday. Then we get the medical the medical update on, on uh, Tuesday night into kind of Wednesday morning. And that that as well was my takeaway, Coach. It's like, oh my god, like this guy is is lucky to even be in surgery and to now mm -hmm. be uh, resting and and recovering. Um, you know, KP, we're we're obviously going to uh, talk a lot about this. You know, there's there's going to be a lot more updates coming. Uh, but I, I kind of want to just just touch on how this kind of sends shockwaves through the rest of the PGA Tour because Coach is absolutely right. The version of Tiger Woods that we're seeing, and this is kind of something we've well documented, um, it's different. It's it's what you want to describe as a softer big cat, however you want to describe it. Uh, you know, you have Justin Thomas who uh, uh, is saying, you know, this is one of my my best friends. And I mean, think about 10 years ago. Would, would any PGA tour professional have described Tiger Woods as one of their close, one of their best friends like that. I, I don't think so. You know, right. It's just kind of a different version of Tiger. And then we got JT and Rom and Bryson and all these guys kind of at the range or at the presser, uh, getting ready for this week, uh, giving the reactions to this and, and, and you can kind of see and feel the impact that he has on, on even his peers. Yeah, for sure. I watched JT. I watched Rom Bryson Fino. Fino is really good Fino, on, yeah on tiger Fino's really I, you know we we talked about him on sunday but he's he's really good to like I, I love listening to him i think he's really good on a lot of different uh you know topics um okay. i think that you know the the interesting part with tiger that that they all kind of and i get why they did this but they were talking about oh he'll you know he'll bounce back he um you know he's he's the toughest guy i know all these different things and I feel, and I wrote about this on, on Tuesday night, I think the thing that we're sort of missing here, so what's the question that all three of us always get asked? Any Anytime when we're on a radio show or do, you know talk about Tiger with our friends or whatever, it's like, hey, is this the end? Right. Mm -hmm. Is this the end? Is mm -hmm. that it? And then the, the flip side of that is, is he back? Is he back? <laughs> yes. Is he back? Yes. So it's always, it's always like one of those two extremes. 
And man, the thing that I was thinking about, and I realize this is cheesy and I don't care because it, it hit me, was you see that car being lifted out of the, the ravine and it's got the word Genesis on, on the side of it, right? Gen- mm-hmm. from, the, from the tournament. And Genesis obviously, obviously means beginning. And you're like, man, wh- wh- why? Let's, let's not ask that question anymore. Let's talk about like, not is this the end, but is this a new beginning for him? Right. Because it's not about, it's not about golf. Like he, he has literally given his body like to like up to near death on Tuesday to this sport to try to recover, to try to come back. And some of that, I'm sure he did it for himself, but I think a lot of it was you know, to, for, for, fan, for people that, that adored him, for people yes. that, that rooted for him, yes. all these different things. And it's yes. like, I don't need any more of that. <clears throat> right. Like I, I, like, let's talk about like what a new beginning could look like for Tiger as a human, not as a golfer. And so that's sort of, you know, when players start saying, Oh, he'll bounce back, you know, Ben Hogan, all this stuff. It's like, whatever, man. Like I, I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. So that's sort of where I was at on Tuesday night, just as I, I started thinking about some of these things. Yeah, obviously, um, this is something we're not done talking about. We're going to obviously get more updates in the following days and weeks and and, and months. So uh, I, I think now is a good time. What we're going to do is we're going to get into uh, the WGC. We're going to talk golf. We're going to talk about the guys competing on the course this week. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. And we're back. We've got PGA Tour action starting Thursday morning at the Concession Golf Club. And coach, this is the event, this WGC that was held in Mexico the past couple of years, but because of travel and COVID restrictions, uh, they move it to the start of the Florida Swing. So now we get a four-week Florida Swing at a golf course, the Concession, that Nobody's really played. Nobody really knows about, right? At least not on a professional level. So uh, it's almost like a blank slate. Slate, new course, the top seventy-three players in the world, uh, all vying for a lot of tight, a lot of money, and and a big crown. The, these are the events that the players love. When you show up, a guaranteed paycheck. You know you're going to play <laughs> for four days, and you also realize that uh, you're one of the top seventy-two dudes uh, that qualified for this uh, style. And there's always like one or two guys. So you're like, how in the world did that dude get in, into this tournament? I always feel like. Uh, so uh, but Name now, those guys out there yeah, right now. Yeah, like, right, right. So I, I was looking at some aerials and some uh, things online of, of concession, and it looks spectacular. And the only time we've really ever seen it on TV is when Bryson was winning there back in 2015. And that was kind of in the infancy stages of the college championships being on the golf channel. Mm-hmm. Um but this looks like a big boy golf course. I'm really, really anxious to see the par fives because when four of your top five most difficult holes are the par fives, that's unheard of. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen that on any course uh, before. So uh, I think course knowledge these first three days are paramount. And as I was handicapping my picks for the week yesterday, uh, I'm looking at ball strikers. I'm looking at veterans and uh, not necessarily uh, bombers but I'm looking at guys that are really good with the wedges. Cause I think these par fives, uh, there's going to be a lot of wedges, not necessarily going for uh, the mm-hmm. green and two. Yeah. One of them's like 610 yards or something yeah. ridiculous. So I don't know who, I don't know who's getting home in two outside of maybe Bryson taking a whack at it. Uh, KP, I actually, uh, what has I, I coach brings up the fact that these guys are, you know, as long as you, as long as you start, you get paid. Is there anything more straight vibing than when DB Daniel Berger hit one tee shot in, I think it was in Memphis to collect his 52 grand. And then was like <laughs> later, but later guys, <laughs> it was at, uh, it was at Bridgestone. Okay, bridge that. Yes, 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 a, yes. a couple of years ago. <laughs> hey, he he needed a new he needed a new part for the boat. So it's like, hey, I'll show up, <laughs> I'll hit a tee shot, and and we'll see you guys later. Yeah. The, the thing oh. about that, first of all, he piped it down the middle of the fairway, and and everyone was like, oh, you're not healthy enough to play. You just piped <laughs> on down the fairway on one. Uh, and then of course, and then of course, uh, you know, golf Twitter got to him about respecting the game and all that stuff. So it was, oh, sure. it was, a, yeah. it was a great week, KP. It was a great week. Um, you know, look, looking forward to, you know, we don't often get. So this is obviously COVID has been horrible and horrendous for everything and everybody. Um, but the sport of golf, the game of golf has thrived and, and and what it has allowed us to do at times is see courses 
we've really never seen in specific ways, whether it is without, um, it is without fans. It is without grandstands in kind of their more natural setup, getting a course like the concession, which by all accounts is going to look awesome on TV and it's going to be a fair test and it's going to be a challenge. Like why we don't, we don't enough get to see new courses. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. You know, I think, <clears throat> yeah, it's been one of the unintended consequences I think of, of some of the WGC stuff is, I mean, you look back, this is way before I was covering golf, but they used to play one of the WGC events in Spain. Like they used to play it in Europe often. I think it was the American Express, maybe. Um, and yeah, like I it's cool that that P, the PJ Tour goes to some of the same places. Like you think about uh, Riviera, right? Like that's it's awesome that they go there every year, but it's also fun to be able to go to different places as well. And concession. I think concession is interesting because the 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 course that I keep thinking of when I read about it or see it is Muirfield Village. And maybe that's just a maybe that's just a bad, like easy comparison because it's a Jack Nicholas yeah. design and you know some of the some of the layouts are, are a little bit similar like some of the whole layouts are a little bit similar to Muirfield Village, but that's sort of the the one I keep going back to. I think about how much fun we had with that uh, oh. last year with oh. with work day and and with the memorial. So yeah. uh, to me, I, I think that makes uh, playing at concession this week all the more exciting. Will Jack start ripping up the first green at concession <laughs> as the champion? <laughs> that, was <crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. That was insane. That was crazy. What, yeah. what, what, what was that? <laughs> what is the incentive to start when you are like two hours away from losing daylight? Like just start tomorrow. Start yeah, on I, Tuesday, exactly. Monday morning. Mar marketing. Oh. It's a marketing opportunity. Jack, you yeah, design. 100%. I'm still talking about it. It absolutely works. Yeah. Um, you know, coach, we've got obviously every single player in the top 10 in the world here. It's an absolutely stacked field, but we've got a couple of the big boppers who are coming off weeks that weren't so great at Riviera. Mm -hmm. Justin Thomas, Rory McElroy, Bryson DeChambeau, all missing the cut. And they're kind of different ways to miss the cut, right? You know, Bryson, he played fine on Thursday, played much better on Friday, but couldn't putt. And that's enough to miss a cut. You know, Rory just couldn't putt for, for two days. That's good <laughs> enough to miss a cut. And then Justin Thomas, I, I mean, couldn't do anything. I mean, the, if you look at the numbers, everything went wrong. So I, I'm trying to see how, how do we feel about these big boppers? Uh, you know, when you inject them into a field that has guys that are playing at the peak of their powers, I, I feel like sorry, yeah, Dustin Johnson, I, John Rahm, they're all absolutely peaked out yeah, right now. My apologies. Um, <clears throat> I I feel like this is the first time that I can remember in a really, really long time that recent form, <clears throat> excuse me, that recent form is more important than the numbers. And what I mean by that is Max Homa last week. Normally, when you're playing two or three really good weeks in a row, what happens, guys? They regress a little bit because they're in the mix and they're in the heat, and that takes a lot of your energy. But now, for the first time, we're seeing really hot players continue to stay hot and cold players continuing to stay cold, which to me makes handicapping a little bit easier. And I'm fading JT every chance I get this week because he's an emotional player. And when he's in it, he's fantastic. When he's mostly not in it, he doesn't play very well. And right now, with everything that's happened with his grandfather, which what happened in Hawaii, with what happened with Tiger – I don't know how he maintains a focus Yes, uh, tomorrow. And then you got Rory. And Rory's just not hitting it well. And when he doesn't hit it well, his misses aren't a little. His misses are massive. So of these three really big players that missed the cut last week, Bryson has won on this golf course before. We know he more – I think more than those two guys can flip that switch and all of a sudden shoot a 15 or 20 under par on any given course. Um, so for me, if I'm looking at one of these three guys, it's, it's him – but overall, I'm looking at guys that are that are really hot right now because everybody's coming into this with with basically blinders on except for Bryson. Uh, cer certainly true in that aspect. Uh, you know, JT and Rory and, and uh, KP, did you see in, in what was one of the worst timed uh, marketing yes. things? Yes. You okay? The European Tour gotta, drops the the JT Roy your, McElroy. Yeah, you got to turn your auto uh, your auto tweets off. <laughs> your your scheduled your scheduled, oh. your scheduled tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but wow. how, first of all, these two, uh, every time I see Rory do anything, I love the guy even more, right? Like, like he gets 50 cracks at making a hole in one and he's entertaining and he's fun and he's lighthearted and he's really good at golf. Like it, it, it's awesome to see part one. And then part two, we've seen just in the last month or so, and I want to get your take on this. 
missing the cut doesn't matter, right? I mean, who uh, Patrick Reed wins a golf tournament after missing a cut. Uh, Brooks misses three in a row. Uh, wins a golf tournament, Daniel Berger coming off of a missed cut. Like some of these studs just can flip a switch. Yeah. And, and I think you look at one of the things I was interested in, I forgot who had it, probably Justin Ray, but Rory's, I like that we're now attributing Rory, probably Justin. Ray. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know who I, I, it might have been, uh, Ben, uh, Ben Coley over at, uh, I can't remember what publication, but, um, Rory's has been really good historically coming off missed cuts. And the reason we know that is because he hasn't missed a lot of them. So we have like, we have this, like, <laughs> you know, the last five times, which stretches back like six years that he's, that he's, you know, one finished top 10, it, it, you know, right after missing a cut. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I, you know, I think the guy that, that I am worried about most, I guess is JT probably um, out of those three. Yeah. I think that, I'm not I obviously not worried about him long term. 25 wins in in the in the two, 2020s is still <laughs> on the table for me. But um so I think I think Bryson is fine. I think he'll be good this week. And you know Rory, Rory I don't I don't think you can get super excited about him winning this week just because the iron play still has not there's been moments over the last six months where it's been good, but it hasn't been consistently good. And it hasn't it hasn't been inconsistently great enough in the weeks where he's on that you're like, oh, it could pop up this week. Um, so I don't know about winning, but I, I think he's going to bounce back and have a good week. Ben Coley of uh, Sporting Life and also created the – Sporkle quiz that we used, Kyle, for the like oh. one one time major winners or whatever that we did. Uh, he's a great we, he's a great read. I, he, people should follow yeah. him. He's he's awesome. Really like him. Absolutely. That was um, one of the most fun things that I've ever done on the show. <laughs> that, that, that was, was so really, fun. really hard. That was so fun. That was so fun. I was more nervous. Like I feel like not. I, I knew the answers, and I was still nervous. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine these two guys going back and forth, and oh. like I could see the look in their eyes, and like when when one gets stolen right before them, the panic on Greg's face or whatever. Like it was, oh. it was really brilliant. I love. We got to do that again soon. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, our, let's do our little super contest here. So this is where we take $100 and we go over to William Hill and we allocate a betting card for the week and we keep track of it. And Greg, thanks to that Patrick Reed win a couple of weeks ago, is leading the field. So we'll have to get his picks here at some point. But coach, we're going to start with you and your yeah. betting card. And I'll I'll review it. And then I want to ask you a couple of questions about this. So sure. make sure they all get called out. So uh, a couple of matchups at the top of your card, which is Xander Shoffley over Rory McIlroy. It is Daniel mm -hmm. Berger over Patrick Reed. Then you have taken, uh, this is what I assume to be Cameron Smith. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. As a, in a three-way over Hideki Matsuyama yeah. and Max Homa, back with Daniel Berger over Sungjae and Scotty Scheffler, Cam Smith as the best top-of-the-world player, Bryson to win, and Cam Smith, your best bet as a top 20. So, Coach, let's start with this. Cam Smith love this week. That's what I see. Because he's been I, – I call him the silent assassin <laughs> because this is a dude that all of a sudden you look at the final leaderboard on Sunday and he's in a T4 or he's in a T6, or he's in third. This dude is becoming elite, and we're still able to get some pretty good numbers on him. But for me to get the plus 163, I had to throw in uh, an extra name. And you know in golf handicapping that the A1, you always fade the previous week's winner. So for me, this is pretty easy. You fade Max Homa. He, he probably celebrated on Sunday night, and – he had to travel cross country. I don't. I, I don't think he'll play well this week, or at least not well enough to beat Cameron Smith. And then Hideki, just his game has been off. Yeah. And then the other love I have here is Daniel Berger. Yep. He's going to have to prove to me because he he cost me money at Pebble Beach. He's got twenty six straight rounds at par or better. Does Patrick Reed have that in him? I saw him play in Saudi. He didn't play very well. So I'm banking on the fact that Berger is going to be Berger. Cameron Smith is going to be Cameron Smith. I'm fading Rory. This is more about Rory than it is about Xander. And I had to throw in five bucks on Bryson because if he channels his 2015, I don't want to be on the outside looking in on that. So to me, this is a, a very strategic betting card. 
It is very strategic, and I also will note that it is uh, the the higher units on the matchups, a little bit less on the three balls, Always. and then a little bit less on your outrights, obviously, because your outright bets get up to 20 to 1. Your matchups are closer to even money. So I'm assuming that is all part of the plan, Coach. I tell all my fans that follow me and follow my picks that if you really want to make money at golf betting, do not, do not bet a lot on winners and on props, meaning top 20s, top 10s, top 5s. You really want to make money, grind it out with matchup bets. That's how you make money in golf betting. Uh, it certainly is. Also, just to clarify, that Cameron Smith rest of the world, that's essentially non-American, right? So Correct. That's Non-Euros and – oh, non-Euros and U.S. is Jacob is confirming in the chat for me. So you you remove all your Euros, <laughs> you remove all your Americans, and it's the rest of the world, Coach. It's a president's I, coach. I almost messed with you guys. I almost and I, I was gonna put Mackenzie Hughes in there as the top Canadian and then just make up a number because he's the only Canadian that's ah. in the field this particular week. Uh, then I didn't know if the joke would go over very well. So, I didn't do that, so. <laughs> it, I, it would have taken me at least five minutes to realize he was not. He was, was I would be like, the way you like, just Hughes. told it. So I would have been like Hughes or cool. um, well, Hadwin's not here. Sloan's not <laughs> right, here. Right. Cor I was Connors so surprised. I would have. Yeah, I would have taking me a couple minutes to figure <laughs> that one out. Um, okay, cool. We're going to go to, actually, uh, we have Greg's card here. So sorry, oh, producer cool. Jacob. I don't know if he was ready for this, but we do have Greg's betting card and he is leading our little contest. So you might want to heed. That still looks like Coach's betting card. We're going to get that updated. Uh, but I have Greg's card. And here's what it looks like. He has a couple of matchups down here at the bottom, which is Brooks Kepka over Webb Simpson. That is plus 100 mm. for Brooks. He has a three ball of John Rom over Xander and JT. So a little bit of a fade of Justin Thomas there as well. We've got yep. a couple of top 20s, including his best bet, which is Ryan Palmer, top 20, mm. and Lonto Griffin, top 20 at three plus 333. Ooh, Rick, Rick wow. might be heading over to William Hill for that one wow. in a couple of in a couple of minutes. And then uh, he closes out his card with three different outrights. One on Dustin Johnson at six and a half to one, one on John Rom at 10 to one, and one on Bryson DeChambeau, KP, at 20 to one. So very clearly, Greg has uh, heard Heard that top 10 players in the world win these golf tournaments at a pretty ridiculous clip and he has taken uh three of them to to try to find a winner yeah last four years the only uh non-major guys to win one of these are hideki and xander so and they're pretty major uh, every, <laughs> they're pretty yeah, major, every, yeah. Every, yeah everybody else who's won one i think it's since 2017 uh has been a major champion uh, a stroke play only, not not talking about the match play. So the right. the three stroke play WGC events. So yeah, the 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 biggest. I mean, the guys that are, and it makes sense, right? Like if you have a field of superstars, the superstar is probably going to win it. Although it's you know I was writing about this. It's such an opportunity for somebody like an Abraham Answer or a Cameron yeah. Smith that's not in that top twelve, top fifteen tier to to jump up, but they just. You know, I think you have to go back to probably Shane Lowry at Bridgestone in like 2016. Oh, that's a great to, call. Yeah. To uh, to kind of find somebody outside of that the the big boy group that that's won one of these. The this is a stat that um, Jason Sobel started and then Will Haskett kind of elaborated on. So yeah, remove the the match play WGC. The last 14 of them, 10 winners have come from the top 10 in the official yeah. World Golf rankings at the time. I mean, the, you you get them all and they all play well when you guarantee them four rounds. I, I also think part of the reason for that, guys, is that it, the cream always rises to the top. I think sometimes guys start slow. And then they missed the cut when they could have gone low on Saturday and Sunday. How many times have we seen yeah. a Bryson go 16 under over the course of the weekend? And on these courses and in these events, you get that. And I think that's part of the reason why uh, a top five or a top 10 player wins most of the time, because you get the best talent over the course of 72 holes. By the way, the, al the alternate list for this tournament, there is an alternate list. Three wow. of the top five names, Siwoo, Spieth, and Ricky Fowler. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Which is which That's is insane. crazy. It is. It is That's crazy. crazy. I wonder that if is. they're going to be on site because I always wonder that about the alternates. Do you go there, especially when there's a, another event that, that they could technically go play it? Yeah. You know, imagine, Jeez. imagine Spieth rolling up to uh, <laughs> Puerto Rico. 
<laughs> that would be sick. That would be sick. Like, I just need a win. Up. I need a win yeah. right now. Like I need this. You or don't want to win that, that though. What That's what true. if he went to the to the concession and he was the one waiting to see if somebody dropped out? And like from what said, I, <laughs> yeah. from what I, mean, I understand, uh, these guys are very aware of if there's a chance that somebody like, hey, it's Monday or Tuesday, and so and so is not feeling so well or whatever. Okay, they 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 are apparently very aware of that, and I don't know if those guys would make the trip. I mean, if you're Spieth or Fowler, I guess they don't care about the the jet fuel. It's not going to cost them anything or whatever. But like, um. I would be surprised if, the, if you're the third alternate at this point, you're not getting in. Would be the way. I, I, pro I probably, to be honest with you, I, I, they're so good or their names are so high, they probably don't even want to get in as an alternate. To be honest, they're like, if I haven't earned it, then, mm. then, then I don't want to be my, my ego won't allow me to go and sit in Florida to see if I get into a golf tournament. I'm just not going to do that. Uh, producer Jacob makes a great point is, uh, these, these South Florida guys, if they're already there, they're close by, they don't even have to worry about fueling. That up is true. It's only yeah. like an hour and a half for most yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, my betting card, let's do that. And I have really committed to the matchups as the significant portion of my card and then just fired just a couple of sprinkles onto oh. the outright. So I've gone with my best bet and uh coach, you have the same exact one here. Daniel Berger over Patrick Reed. Love the complete game that Berger has. Both of these guys coming off of recent victories. I then opted for Brooks Kepka at plus 100 over Webb Simpson for the uh, vast majority of the allocation of my funds. And then I could not resist throwing <laughs> a Tony Finau for oh. well, William Hill. So they boosted his odds. They, they gave us wow. an odds boost to 25 to one. This guy, I, I mean, KP, he's, he's, like the hottest player in the world. He's got runner up finishes three weeks, three starts in a row. He's the hottest player in the world. I thought this was my card. You're going to see in a second how, <laughs> how similar they are. Yeah. So coach is right about the, we always fade the winner from the previous week, but I think that we also, I think incorrectly fade guys that are like run, like somebody like a Fina who's uh, notoriously a runner up. And he he hasn't I, I I don't know I don't have the stat on this. It seems like guys that win just kind of start to fall off after the win, just even if for a couple of weeks. But somebody who hasn't yet won like Finau, we also we're I think we're doing the same thing to him as we are You're to right. Homa, and it's like You're I don't right. know he's he's got three straight runner ups and he hasn't gotten that win to where you can kind of relax a little bit. So I I don't I don't think anybody should be I, I think you should be playing him this week rather than fading him. Yeah, uh, real quick, by the way, uh, you, you threw, threw that odds boost. How funny was it when Mark actually played a, an odds boost and he actually mentioned it? Like he even knew what the hell that was? I, I was thought shocked. that was hilarious last week, by the way. <laughs> I was shocked. So I, I, I assumed uh, – because and I, so I, it took me until this week to realize why that Mark found that because they make it like really big and like right in the middle oh. of the page as soon as you click it. And I saw, I was like, Oh, fee now. And I was like, Oh, that's how Mark got 18 to one on can't lay last week or whatever. Cause it's like in, you know, bright blue or like, whatever. Okay. Although that makes screen. sense. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and, and I'll talk about these guys uh, in a bit here, but I, I also, I also threw down on, on Hatton and, and, and Victor Hovland, who I'm, I'm absolutely stoked uh, uh, for both of them. They're both at 20 to one. I will be sharing more thoughts on, on Hatton in a moment, but KP, as we transition over to your card, you know, the, the Victor Hovland stuff's unbelievable. You, you talk about guys who um, win and then fall off. Ask Harris English, right? Harris English hasn't played yep. well since his victory. It's a good example. Uh, Vic, Victor Hav Hovland, wins in Mayakoba and has not mm -hmm. stopped. Like immediately went over to the Middle East, played well, has played well recently, gets to go to a place that that no one has seen. Like I'm I'm super stoked for Victor Hovland and he makes your betting card as a top 10 bet as well. Yep, I got Hovland on here a couple times. Um Hovland over Hatton is my is my best bet, which I'm concerned about your Hatton stuff here in a second. <laughs> uh, and then I've got I've got I think we all had Kepka over Webb. And this yeah. just, I mean, this is a course that does not, I mean, when you think about Webb Simpson courses, this does not uh, scream web, you know? Um, and, and, and for Kepka, if this was, I, I think like, if this was a major, we would be talking about, Hey, is Kepka going to win this week? Right. Like mm -hmm. he won mm -hmm. Phoenix. He, uh, he was f okay at Riviera. I don't think he ever really plays that great at, at Riviera, but this is a type of course that, 
kind of like it's not like Aaron Hills, but it's it's a it's kind of a big track, like a big ballpark, like an Aaron Hills. To where with Kepka, you're like, oh, this is like this is his deal. Like this is where he thrives, you know. And so I just I, that the the Kepka over Webb just really stood out to me. And then Finau, I mean, three straight top twos. Uh, I think he's got four straight top fives. If I'm if I'm at least four straight top tens. And then the odds boost obviously was was appealing as well. The last time that all three, so we had three of us on Adam Scott over Hideki Matsuyama last week, which is usually the kiss of death that that <laughs> cashed. Uh, so we all are loading up on Kepka over Webb Simpson to see if we can keep this rolling. Um, I see, sorry, producer Jacob, can you bring that back up? Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Scotty Scheffler is a top 20 bet as well. And then uh, you mentioned Tony Finau with the odds boost and you also backed it up with a top five KP. That's that rounds out your card. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think Hovland's odds haven't caught up to kind of where his talent is at. I mean, if you mm. if you look at the mm. Wolf Morikawa Hovland group, he Hovland's like the, like the third best player in the world right now. If you want to go just on like strokes gained and recent form and all that stuff, that's not how we do it, which is fine. But uh, in terms of strokes gained, T to green over the last, I think it was three months. It's DJ and Hovland, and those right. are your top two. And I think people have sort of not caught up with that that reality yet. Moving over to our one and done. Coach, you enter with 1.7 million. You got 151,000 from Jordan Spieth last week. You have uh, every single player in the top 10 in the world rankings here. And outside of John Rahm and Xander Shoffley, you have available to you. Where do you think you're going this week? Well, see, I wanted to bring up something uh, as well because – Mark tends to do this, and as I'm chasing, I knew this was coming. It, it, you know where I'm going with this. It's yeah. like I come onto the show, I'm prepared, I've got my guy, and I throw out my guy, and then Mark will go, "Well, I'm still thinking about what I'm going to play, so um, I'll get back to you before the first tee time on." Th-. I'm like, "Wait a second, wait a second. When you're in the lead, you can't decide after we give out our picks on the show." You've got to give out your picks before the show. So I'm calling a red flag. I'm throwing a red I'm I'm throwing a challenge flag. Which do you want to go what go ahead? Do you want to not do you want to not dis- disclose your pick right no, now? Is I that do, but I think okay. we all we all should have to do it. And I the reason I'm I'm getting ready to give you my pick, that's why I prefaced it, is I wanted to go with somebody else. But I felt like if I went with that guy, that Mark would go, "Yes, coach, I like that pick." <laughs> And I believe that I'm going to go with the same guy. And it's impossible to gain ground if they use the same guy as me. So I feel like that needs to be something we change. So I actually agree with this more so because when we all do it via text, it's un it's unfair for whoever goes like Rick always, uh, uh, always responds first on, on our group text. And that's unfair for him because you could theoretically, I don't know if anybody does this, but you could theoretically just, Pick, like if you're yes. leading, pick this, pick the same guy. So I actually agree that we need to maybe disclose it on like Tuesday and then just talk yes. about what it is after that. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's I'm trying the to protect, way to do I'm it. protecting the field, Rick. I'm, I'm trying to protect <laughs> you. See, see, but the way that I look at it is when I see Jacob's text, I, if I see you guys pick first, then I will out smart myself so i just yeah, throw it out there like you guys figure out what to do with this i'm just gonna throw it throw it out there uh okay so coach so uh, the other thing is coach this is kind of your fault you you poked mark you poked him and you said you were gonna catch him by the masters and now he has plenty of time very plenty of time yeah he's thinking, I mean, he, and he is he is I just know. not letting you get there and he's, I understand. He wins. he's just not letting you get there <laughs> i understand i understand that completely <laughs> I'm just saying completely. That's why I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out how do I change the rules. That's yeah. what I've been trying to do. All uh, right. Who, so who do you like go, this week? All right, all right. Sorry, that was three minutes to get to no, this. No, that was perfect. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Cameron Smith. If I'm yeah. going to double down on my betting card, then I've got to. I, I was going to go with Bryson, but I felt like that everybody, or at least some people, would go with Bryson because he's the only guy that has played significantly on this course before and won here. As a, as a collegiate. So I'm going to say, plus, I want to save him for some other big tournaments that are coming down the pike. So I'm going to go Cameron Smith, one and done, lock it in. That's my pick. 
Lock it in, says coach. Producer Jacob is at 2.3 million. And then it is Kyle Porter who has snapped into the $3 million range. Oh. Thanks to a pretty, a pretty good stretch of, of golf here. So Victor Hovland gets him 344,000 last week. Kevin Streelman, 165 the week before. And going back four weeks uh, because he had Tony Finau, Basically a million bucks over the last four weeks, KP. Wow. You are on the move, my wow. man. Wow. I, I think I'm going to try to pick John Rom for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, he, looks, he looks good every week. <laughs> so this is this is uh, this is hard because it's easy to forget that we still have four majors and the players and two more WGCs. Yes, 50. we're doing 50 events that remember wow. that. <laughs> Wow. And I'm, I feel like I'm just burning through. I want to. I want to <laughs> pick Hovland again, honestly. But um, go ahead, just go ahead, go ahead and pick him. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. We were, uh, we were trying to add rules where, like, if you pick a guy twice, you get like half his earth. Like everyone tries to get very creative with the rules <laughs> when we're when we're desperate here. <laughs> uh, I I think that like my my lean right now is Bryson, but I might. I might amend that to pick somebody that's like, you know, it, like outside the top 40 just because I, like I, I want to save Bryson. I want to save DJ because it, it it's I need to save them for the Masters, yeah. for the PGA, all these different events coming up. So I I, I don't know. I, I might end up with like a, a, a Scheffler or somebody like that. But if I pick a top guy, I'm leaning I'm leaning toward Bryson or Patrick Cantlay. Patrick Cantlay has been playing really well. Yeah, he he certainly has. I'm next. I'm at 3.4 million. I also got uh, cash from Victor Hovland last week, and uh, I'm probably just going to roll out Terrell Hatton. And I think that he is. Uh, first of all, he's won like worldwide KP four times, in, like his last like 23 starts. Yeah, but do, do you feel like this course fits him? I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Course. We don't know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we don't yeah. Know. I, 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 I mean, it's like we're flipping he, a coin. Here's what I think. I think Hatton is incredibly solid. I think he's a lot more volatile than than some of the other guys. We've seen him play well in Florida. We've seen him compete at big events. Uh, I don't have anywhere else I'd want to use him, which I think is also kind of important in this situation. You know, he's going to play. Yeah. He's going to play all the big events. Do I just roll him back out at API? I don't know if I want to do that. So, like, because I don't have a natural landing spot for him, because he's played so well, because he's won it on the European Tour recently, because I don't know anything about this course. That's kind of how I got to Hatton. Yeah, I'm changing my I'm changing my pick to Hatton. You just convinced me. I went, <laughs> I, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I think yeah, I would. Me. <laughs> why, why would you not save him for next week in what's probably going to be a you know average field at at Bay Hill? Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think I think he's gonna he's gonna be the best player in that field probably. I don't know if Xander or JT are playing. It's possible. I mean, do we even know if he's going to play next week? We assume he's going to play. I mean, he's going to play four weeks in a row because he's definitely going to play API and he's definitely going to play the players, right? Wait, so API is is next. Oh, oh yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking Honda was next week. Sorry, sorry. A API yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah. Honda yeah. is the 15th. Right, right. I'm, I'm, yeah, doing, after, I'm doing the Honda. Yeah, after you know, players. Bay, Bay yeah. Hill has yeah. uh, has some things that can bite you. You can miss a cut real quick at Bay Hill, I feel like. And I, I don't want to bring in that kind of missed cut equity. So I'm going to roll out Hatton here. Okay. See what happens. Next up is, oh, I almost said Greg. No, it is Mark. Mark is at 4.3 million because he's been so preoccupied, coach, with battling you. He is on <laughs> a pretty a pretty bad stretch of golf right now. So in his last eight events, he has gotten a combined 859,000 with the bulk of it coming from Joaquin Neiman at Sony. So you might have you might have uh tripped up Mr. Mark here with with your uh with your plays. There is no question that I've gotten in his head. There is no question that I have gotten in his head. However, it's cost me well over $100 at this point to get into his head because I'm making bets with him that I'm losing. And right now, I need to reverse that trend. I need to reverse the trend. Not of him picking bad players, but of me actually gaining ground on him. i got to figure that out. Uh, how good is producer Jacob that we are already, he has already distributed a Google form that we can submit our picks with anonymity. How about Wait, that? Really? Yeah. Really? Check your text. Check your, check. Oh! Your text. Producer, oh, that's producer why, that's Jacob, why he, come with I love that. That's why oh, he's the man. Uh, and then finally, the Greg with 
one million dollars from Tony Finau last week has supplanted Mark as our leader in the one and done. He's at four point seven million. We will obviously yeah. get Greg's pick later in the week, gentlemen. Fun as always. Uh, good to be able to chat about Tiger. Figure out what our what our feelings are. Good to be able to talk golf. Good to be able. Yep, good yeah. to be able to to chat about everything. Anything else before we before we kick it? I'm good. I'm excited. Right. I'm excited about this weekend. I, I think yep. I think concession will be. I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be tough, which is, man, see, even seeing Riviera as tough as it was, I thought it was awesome. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll miss kind of the quirkiness of Mexico, but I think concession will be cool. Yep. Yeah, those 450 yard drives at Chapultepec uh, were were something else. Uh, that'll do it. Kyle Porter, you can find on Twitter at Kyle Porter CBS. That's the coach. You can find him on Twitter at the Coach Rules. Producer Jacob, just uh, unbelievable stuff behind the scenes. Thank you very much. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut, and we'll catch you next time.